Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am coming back again with another Ill Clan mech review. Uh, this one in volume 10. Awesome. So cool. So we did the Archer not too long ago. And in fact, after I did this review, I realized we had done in the past an Archer and Vulture Comparo. So now you can do your own. Uh, if you go to battlelytics.com, you can check out all the mechs there. Um, and you can see if, uh, if this vulture stacks up to that new uh, beast of an archer that we looked at not too long ago, the 7C, I believe it was. Um, so this one, this is the Vulture Alt Config G. And this one was actually released um, prior to, the, um, to this recognition guide. Uh, it was released in the TRO 3145, I believe. Um, and so it's clan heavy mech. It, uh, it's got a battle value of 2504. 60 tons, really great loadout, just streaks galore, guys, streaks galore. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this one performs. I think for a 60 ton mech, we're going to see a lot of damage coming out of it. Uh, but stay tuned, we're going to run it through Battlelytics, all the simulations and benchmarks, and we'll see what it looks like. So it's coming right up. All right, so diving into the technical overview. Um, so again, 2504 battle value. We love the Vulture, also known as the Mad Dog. Um, Clan Omnimac. Movement profile, uh, 580. So it doesn't jump, but it's got a really great um, ground speed. It can get you that plus two um, target modifier. It has 13 double heat sinks, so total dissipation of 26. Uh, XL Fusion Engine. Clan ferrofibrous armor, everything else is standard. Now, in terms of the armor, it's got 8.5 tons, which gives you 163 pips. So total coverage is 81.1%. Um, I would say the average is about 75% for mech. So 81, it's pretty much on par. Um, and if you look in the center diagram, it's a pretty nice distribution. Might be a little bit light on the CT. I might peel a little bit more off the legs. Um, but overall, I think this looks like a, a really decent distribution um, of, of armor on this particular mech. Um, notice that left arm does not have a lower arm actuator. That's because the, the weapon pod uh, gracing that side is, in fact, the mighty decapitator, the ERPPC. Um, and then it's got a trio of medium pulse lasers in the right arm. It's got a streak LRM 15 in the left torso and then dual streak sixes in the right torso. So it's got some serious firepower going on. I'm excited to see how this shakes out because again, those streaks, right, the way they work is you declare your shooting, you roll to hit. If you miss, you don't expend ammo, you don't build up heat, nothing. If you hit, you don't even roll in the cluster table. It's just like you eat 15 missiles or you're gonna eat you know, six to 12 SRMs, very cool. Um, the only downside, and this is the same thing with the Vulture Prime, if I recall, is the ammo. It's un it just doesn't have enough. Eight rounds uh, on the streak, 15, um, and then 15 rounds on the streak, six. So the LRM's got eight rounds. The, the pair of SRM's only have 15 rounds between the two of them. So it's like eight and seven, respectively. It's not a ton, but again, it does have that ERPPC, does have that medium pull. It's got a ton of weapons. So let's see how it shakes out. We're gonna start with the offense and work our way in from there. Okay, so on the offensive side, uh, finally, we've got a mech that can build up some heat. Uh, so the baseline's pretty good, 310.7 damage. When you're in the 300s, you know it's good. And again, this is a 60 ton mech. I mean, this is, uh, <laughs> it's pretty serious. Um, you can see it does start to build up a little bit of heat. Um, and you can also see uh, the damage dip off right at turn nine. And that's because that streak 15, the hopper goes dry, it's out of ammo. So you do see a substantial dip in damage there from turn eight to turn nine. Um, when we look at the red line benchmark, I mean, the, the heat is off the chart. I mean, within two turns, it is, well, three turns really, uh, it is just at 30 points. So it is, it, if it wants to ride the red line, it can. 
Uh, and you can see, you know, there's really no damage to be gained just by doing that. However, with the right application of heat, you can squeeze about 5.8% more damage out of this thing, uh, and it brings that optimized ACD up to 328.8. So that is a great number. Um, and again, you know, you're using a little bit more of your weapons. Um, you are building up some heat, but you're not really taking on massive penalties um, within, um, you know, this. All of the heat in the, in the earlier turns, turn 5, turn 6, turn 7, turn 8, that's all, you know, under 7 points of heat. So at worst, you're just taking on a movement penalty. Um, and then in the last turn, turn 1, it sort of does a big alpha strike, or at least what it can shoot, and builds up about 9 points of heat uh, in total. So, not bad. Let's check out lethality. Interested to see what that looks like. All right, so this has got a pretty, uh, pretty good kill curve. We've seen average time to kill at 6.5 turns. Remember, the average so far, you know, and, and this is an ill clan era, so obviously the more advanced, the faster they're going to kill things. But 6.5 is very good. Um, that's very quick. And uh, what you can see here is it, it's head kills. I actually really thought it would be higher, 12.5%. But I guess the only decapitating weapon it really has is the ERPPC. Um, the medium pulse uh, really not getting into range. Um, and the same thing with the streak six is by the time you're in that range, you either haven't hit the head or if a stray SRM hits it, you know, the LRM grouping into clusters of five. So you're still really relying on largely just a PPC hit. So I guess that makes sense. The average there that we see anywhere between, you know, I'd say five to 10%. So a 12.5%, you know, again, courtesy of that ERPPC, very good. Um, very few engine kills. Again, so many SRMs, so many, uh, the LRM clusters, again, you're, you're not rolling, they just all hit if you, if you achieve the hit. I would have expected more engine deaths here, um, but I guess the thing is just doing so much damage. Again, 310 or 328 optimized. That's a, that's a solid shot. It's probably just tearing the mech to pieces um, before it can even generate the crits. So if you look at damage per hit, you're at 9.5. And that, again, courtesy of that, um, the, the trio pulse lasers, you've got the, the SRMs, all of these things, very dangerous. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're at a 9.5, so very good. Critical hits, you're at 3.1. Would have expected a lot more out of this mech. Um, but again, I think because you're you're probably ripping holes in it so fast and taking it off the board, um, you're not really getting the opportunity to generate a lot of criticals there because again, the time to kill very low, 6.5. So that's the lethality analysis here. I was actually surprised by it. I did dig into it. It is right. Um, it's just, I think it's just a byproduct again that it's doing so much damage. It's just blowing this mech apart. Um, but against something bigger, like if it was facing down an Atlas or something like that, this would be a crit generating mech, um, you know, without a question. So that is that. Let's take a look at the mobility. Interested to see. If I recall, the leg armor was pretty good, has good speed, so I'm expecting good results here. Oh, actually, before we get to mobility, we gotta do the defensive stuff. So let's do this first. Survivability curve looks great. 85.9%, uh, very solid. So it does die 14.1% of the time. It's actually probably the highest that we've looked at um, in the last few that we've done, you know, the Executioner and the, um, the Archer, right? Those were, I think, in the 10% death range. So 14% may seem high, but it's still it's still really, really good. Um, and again, it's got great armor coverage, 81% armor coverage with Ferrofibrous. What's the, what's the culprit here? Well, primarily is engine deaths, 8.1%. And that's expected. You know, you've got criticals in both side torsos and criticals in the CT. Um, it does see some ammo death. Now, it is cased, don't get me wrong. However, um, there are scenarios where it would take an engine hit, and then, you know, you'll destroy the cased section, and those remaining two engine criticals will knock the mech out of commission. So that does happen. It is very infrequent, as you can see, 0.7%. And then the rest is CT and head deaths. So this thing, again, facing down an awesome... It does have full armor on the head. Again, that's sort of the, the damage and the matchups, very intentional. Um, because mechs that don't have, and there are many, that don't have the full um, nine armor uh, on the head, you know, the, the nine and three, um, so 12 total, you know, they'll, they'll survive a PPC shot to the head, right? Whereas something like a javelin 
or a Phoenix Hawk, I believe, or the Rifleman, um, where they only have, for whatever reason, seven armor uh, on the head, I believe it is, and then three structure, you know, they'll get one shot at. Anyway, bit of a digression, but um, this thing really, I think, very tough. Ammo critical chance by location, you know, it's under 20% on both side torsos. Those torsos are pretty packed out, I think, with 10 ish criticals um, per side. So, you know, it's got a lot in there all the launchers, um, and so on and so forth. So very cool there um, in terms of survivability. Now let's take a look at, um, at mobility. Okay, so uh, very little degradation. Plus three to start, goes down to plus 2.7. So you're not seeing a lot of motive hits. Again, you're getting a motive hit like once every five games, um, you know, if it's rounding up to point two, that's basically what that would mean. So even though the critical slots are not packed out, the speed in conjunction with the leg armor, it just keeps the thing in one piece and moving most of the time. Now that doesn't mean, you know, someone isn't gonna blow through your leg with a through armor crit um, and end up freezing your hip. That happens, it's factored into this analysis, like it happens in the simulation, but it just happens so infrequently. Um, so overall, this mech can maintain its speed. And I think that's really important for this particular mech. Again, the pulse lasers don't have great range. The SRMs don't have great range. Um, the other weapons do, but you do need to get this mech in close to get that 300 mark on the ACD. So um, let's take a look at efficiency and then we'll dive into threat. Okay, so here it is, uh, the efficiency. So again, we can see that big dip uh, when the LRM, uh, the streak LRM runs out of ammo just at turn eight there going into turn nine. Um, and then you can see the damage start to slowly claw its way back um, as those SRMs and pulse lasers move into, you know, medium and then short range, respectively. Um, there is a 4.7% damage loss based on the, uh, the defensive metric, right? So you're seeing a little bit of, of, uh, of damage loss. And that starts right around, I would say, turn 7 or turn 8 is where you start seeing deaths um, for this mech. And, uh, you know, so most of the streak LRM-15 has done its damage by then. Um, so the overall impact, the damage loss, really good. 10% is sort of the threshold. Anything over 10 is very bad. Anything under 10 is really good. So 4.7% right in there. Now, in terms of efficiency, I was really happy with this. Uh, 8.94, so that is very high. Um, and again, we talked about this with the Archer. Um, although this thing isn't as efficient as the Archer, um, notably, it's about 100 more BV base uh, for point of reference. But when we think about the the sort of the bell curve, right? I mean, anything between four and eight, that's where like the majority of mechs live. Um, you know, the, the, the 5.5s, it's kind of probably the average, maybe a 5.2. Um, anything, once you get past sort of like 8.5, right? You can see that it's, it's a very small population. Um, and so, you know, 8.94, almost nine, very small. A representative portion of mechs in that you know that upper elite tier uh, in terms of bang for buck. So, in, in my opinion, I think this is a great buy um, at an 8.94, just absolutely. And of course, it's a phenomenal model uh, that you can get in the Kickstarter. Um, and so, I mean, why not play it? So, gunnery sensitivity analysis. Let's take a look here. 0.646. What does that mean? That's you know that's that's about average. Um, I think when you get in the sevens and eights, that's when it gets really high. But you know, this mech, you can see it has a pretty steep slope, um, increasing from gunnery four to three to two. And then there's an, a sort of a, I don't want to call it an inflection point, but a point at which um, the slope of the line changes and you're getting less return on investment. And that's expected when you get from gunnery two to gunnery one to gunnery zero. Um, some mechs you actually see it decline, some will run flat. Um, so optimally, Gunnery 2 is where I think I would play this mech. Um, I would probably even consider getting away at Gunnery 3 if I didn't get flayed um, for, for having a, a crappy clan, a genetic defect clan pilot uh, in such a phenomenal uh, a phenomenal variant. But, you know, honestly, if, you're, uh, if you are min-maxing, you know, you consider the, the benefits of the streak uh, and all this other stuff. I mean, do you really need to go up to that Gunnery 2 level? How many points are you playing with? All of these things are considerations. Um, I think optimally, though, I would go with a gunnery, too. I think that's really where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Again, an 8.94 is just it's so good. 
Another bananas uh, mech here. So a 75 point peak alpha strike at 12 inches. That's crazy to me. Uh, that is crazy. So again, that's where everything comes into play. The SRMs, the pulse lasers, everything's hitting uh, at 12 inches uh, and it's you know maximally effective at that range. So really, really cool. Um, at range, you know, out at like 21 inches to 13 inches, you're still very consistently dealing 30 points of damage. You've got 15 from the ERPPC. You've got 15 from your streak LRM. That's pretty good. I mean, that's guaranteed. That's basically like, you know, three, three five point hits guaranteed. Cause again, you're not rolling on the cluster table for a streak and then a 15 point shot. You know, you do that two or three times before they close that mech is going to be feeling it. Um, so pretty interesting. So you do need to build up a ton of heat though. If you're going to get that 75 point alpha strike, uh, you're looking at what is it? Peak heat is 15 points at 12 inches. So basically you, if you want to just fire everything, uh, 15 points of heat is what you're going to build up, uh, which is not insignificant. There's penalties, uh, you know, galore at that point. Um, and you know, we've talked about this in some of our past, um, mech reviews and things like that. Once you start incurring gunnery penalties, you know, you can even just look at the gunnery sensitivity and just assume you've dropped your efficiency down by that much. Um, every time you take a penalty, you are making that mech less and less efficient. It's just an awful thing to deal with. Unless you can shoot and get back and cover, and that's sort of the plan. Um, man, I mean, I really avoid those high heat penalties if I can. But if you need to finish somebody off, this thing's pretty, pretty, pretty brutal. Um, you will see on this mech, because it can build up heat, right? It has maximum ACD, and then it has what's called zero heat ACD. So the zero heat is the white bar. That's if you build up no heat. What, what does your damage look like? The light red is what's your ACD if you alpha strike and fire everything. And then the dark red is like, what if it wasn't based on probability and you just maximized your damage, you know, forget the TN, what's the absolute max you can do. So when you look at these bars, what you're looking for is how close they are together. Um, so you can see at four inches, right? We've got the zero heat ACD very, very close to the maximum ACD. Um, and the max ACD is very close to the alpha strike. So what does that mean? To me, it means it's really not that worth it to build up the heat and alpha strike because your zero heat ACD is only, I don't know, 10 points, maybe 12 points under, um, actually what, let me, let me do the math here. 52 from 65. What is that? 13, eh, 12 or 13. I was close. Uh, so about 12 or 13 points difference. So, you know, 12 points of damage on average, 15 points of heat. It's not a great trade-off. Um, so I think don't get too excited and mash all the buttons and shoot everything. I think if you're patient with this mech, like we saw in the optimized damage benchmark, a little application of heat here and there, an extra pulse laser here and there, I think that's where you get your return on investment. All right, let's talk about the thread envelope. PPC, 360 degree. Basically, you know, you can flip it backwards, you can torso twist, do all sorts of cool things with it. So very cool to have that. Uh, that weapon on an arm mount. And then additionally, you know, the pulse laser is doing a nice uh, job also hitting out into that right arc. Um, and then of course, all the missiles just mainly hitting uh, straight forward, right? Wh whichever way your torso is, is looking. Um, okay, let's talk about rolls. This is always exciting. What would I do with this mech? I would play it in close. Yes, I know it's got an ERPPC. Yes, I know it's got an LRM-15. That doesn't make it a fire support mech, in my opinion. Um, I would play this mech as a frontliner, first and foremost. It is the mech that can get in there. It can take some fire. I mean, I wouldn't put it in the front line if you're going up against a wall of assault mechs, but in a reasonable match, um, you know, where it's, where it's facing off against mechs relatively in its same class, I think it'll survive very well. Again, against the Inner Sphere Awesome, it survived 85.9% of the time. This thing can get in, it can make its way across the field, it can do so very quickly, um, and you know, it can it can attract some fire. Um, secondly, as a cavalry mech, so when I think about what's a cavalry mech, um, it's a mech that you're going to sprint or run across the battlefield at maximum speed um, to get from point A to point B. Um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be moving it 
potentially from you know area to area you know from one objective to another or from you know one pocket of, of battle to another to support one mech to support a different mech but in all of these cases as you're moving around you're trying to get this mech into into close range right um and it can do that very well it can fight in the short and medium range brackets as we see out to 12 inches out to 12 hexes very very well um, and then lastly, I played as a brawler, man. Slap this thing in the city. Who cares? Again, clan LRM 15s, they're not fire support weapons. They're glorified long range, short range missiles. There's no, there's no minimum range on them. I mean, I don't understand what the point of having an SRM is if you've got LRMs with no minimum range. God bless the clans. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. So you can run, and same thing with the PPC, right? They don't have minimum range either. You just run this thing up the point blank and it can just fire everything uh, I've said it so many times, it's just crazy uh, the amount of damage this thing can do. So very, very cool. Um, you know, I think this mech is, is great. It's versatile. Um, and in a pinch, you know, you can put it in a fire support role if you really needed to. I wouldn't, though. Um, but you could. You know, 30 points isn't anything to scoff at. Um, but I think this mech, as you can see from the threat chart, this thing lives at 12 inches and closer. I've mentioned it before. I'll say it again. Um... I love how we've got classic designs that we all love from, you know, the MechWarrior 2 days, right? These these sort of, you know, from the old 2nd and 3rd edition boxes, right? These mechs are just so iconic. The Archer, the Marauder, the Vulture, the Zeus, right? And they're reinventing them and reimagining them in a way um, with, with modernized, you know, quote-unquote technology that fits the Dark Age and the Old Clan era. Um, and they're so competitive and they're really neat. So I really love that about these. So guys, if you haven't got the um, the Ill Clan recognition guides, please check them out. They're $3.99 on Drive-Thru RPG. They're super, super inexpensive. And they're chock full of not only great pictures and the technical readouts and the specs, uh, but you also get all kinds of great lore. There's little stories and, and famous pilots and all that stuff. You know, it's just the thing that really makes the Tiros shine, in my opinion. Um, some really great stuff there. So, that said... If you want to buy a Vulture, it's a Wave 1 item. You can get it over at Ares Games and Minis. Um, the star boxes are discounted. They're an absolute basement bargain buy, in my opinion. Um, so check it out. Uh, I know he is working on, constantly working on getting stock and making sure uh, that he can get you the mechs that you need. So if you need some mechs, definitely head over there. He's got Army Painter, Ironwind Medals, all the new Catalyst stuff, um, anything you need. Uh, secondly, I mentioned it earlier, if you want to check out other mechs, battlelytics.com, we've got them all there, very cool. Um, and if you want to help out the channel, guys, just click the subscribe button, click the little bell notification, um, all of that stuff helps, give us a like. Um, and of course, if you want to help more, you can check us out over on Patreon, uh, the link is down in the description, um, and you can unlock all sorts of neat little perks uh, at becoming a patron of DFA, different tiers have different perks, you can... Uh, partake in challenges and you get access i mentioned to the toolkit um so all sorts of cool stuff there um also lastly guys check out our soundtrack uh we're working on actually our second one now it's in flight uh very excited about it uh it's going to have a little bit of a maybe a maybe a slightly different theme to it we'll see uh but we've got some really cool ideas tom and i have been working uh, on that diligently so um, if you want to listen to the first one you can get it on amazon music itunes spotify um, it's called War Games, uh, Death from Above War Gaming. You can just, uh, you know, ask Alexa or whatever to play that for you. Uh, but that's all I got. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death from Above War Gaming. Have a good night.